First of all, uh, thank you very much to the organizers of the Congress. It's, uh, am I through? Cool. Um, it's always nice to, um, to meet and share and build a lot of new knowledge and to um, see what other people have of experience and um, perspective it with your own. And uh, I've been through some really nice presentations uh, yesterday and also today. Um, it's really strange, this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it's leaving me all the time. Well, we'll see. Um, yeah, you've had a lot of uh, um, like policy perspectives, uh, urban planning perspectives. Am I coming through? I'm not really, am I? Yeah, okay. Um, and then you have some uh, research perspectives and uh, uh, trying to describe some target groups and what we're working with. And it's actually within this last um, theme that I'm going to make a presentation. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a certain target group, uh, which is the one um, around uh, street culture, uh, doing street sport activities. Um, and I think that maybe. Um, well, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to present a, a little bit of a different uh, perspective on street uh, sport, I think, because, or at least see it in a context, a social context of society, uh, because uh, what you normally see in the public discourse around uh, social prob problematics <coughs> is that you tend to talk about the people being socially deprived, socially exposed, socially troubled. Um, I'm going to try to present a little bit of a new perspective, a new terminology on that, and seeing actually street sport as an example of a culture where what we normally call socially deprived uh, actually manifests themselves as a resource to society. It has some certain values that, uh, as a matter of fact, is not only problematic, but can actually be shown to be a positive resource in the way that we see democracy today. Okay. Uh, I'm a co-manager in the project Underground, which is... <laughs> yeah, Underground, which is a um, program for street sport activities in Denmark. Uh, it's uh, under the DGI, which is one of two national, uh, one of the two national sports organizations in Denmark, uh, umbrella organizations. Um, okay, uh, to be completely uh, sure about uh, what we're talking about, everyone, of course, know. Basically, the, the basic activities within street sport is street baskets, uh, BMX, skateboard, you have street football, you have uh, e-sport, actually. We don't understand. Uh, we actually define street sport as activities with the street as, pri as principal arena. Uh, this uh, arena can be understood virtually also, so we've included e-sport because it's much of the same target group also. Uh, which you might know, uh, you have a big, big uh, development in uh, an activity around make a big uh, activities around uh, games in, uh, in a computer. You have parkour, which would be the latest and definitely the most fashionable one, fashionable, fashionable one these days. And then you have a lot of new ones coming all the time. Um, this is parkour. Uh, I'm sure you all know it. Uh, it's the jumping in the city from the roof to roof and around the city. Uh, this is uh, street football. And if we take a closer look at these two um, activities, uh, you can see a lot of differences. Maybe not right now, but um, actually there are. Uh, parkour, uh, BMX, skateboard are normally, uh, should we say, uh, a little bit uh, triangled, but you could say middle upper class. So it would be the normally the people living in the center, with that being students, um, having a, a high level of education. Um, whereas uh, street basket and street football are normally more uh, well, happening in, uh, in 
what we could say, well, areas of the city where the education level is low, where the income level is low, etc. Uh, you have a lot of different reasons for that. <laughs> um, if you make parkour, you are a little bit more entitled to um, expose yourself. Okay, so if you want to make a jump, you can fall. If you're on a skateboard, you go and you can easily fall. And uh, that's that maybe doesn't correspond that well with some of the values that you see in, in a lot of the suburbs uh, as it does with uh, what we normally could say middle upper class society. Um, yeah, so, uh, but also you have a lot of uh, common things, of course. And, um, one of, the, one of the principal things about street sport and what makes it really, really uh, interesting is, of course, that it's got a lot of creativity. So it's got the ability to create something new. I mean, the extreme example is skateboard. It's a complete new sport. You take a board, put wheels on it, and you go. Uh, parkour, uh, it's somewhat the same. It's got some origins in gymnastics, uh, but it's some sort of a new activity. Uh, then you have uh, some of the other activities like street basket and street football, which is taking a traditional sport uh, discipline and changing it to another setting, which is the street. Um, so that's actually one of the core values. I'm going to present three other values that I think are very, very important to the street sport. And one of them uh, is what I've called attitude. I could have called it probably also identity. Um, but with attitude or identity, I mean the, uh, the, the, the strong value of presenting yourself, taking, uh, uh, presenting your personality, being there, being cool, being tough, being the one uh, challenging the others. Um, and basically, uh, uh, I think what it's about is to present yourself and to appear as a person, okay? So it's actually to be the one presenting your life trajectory, presenting your values, presenting your family, presenting your way of life to the others. Uh, and then you have a, a, a long negotiation of, of, of who, uh, which values are actually accepted, which you don't accept, which stories you accept, which ones you don't accept, etc. Um, and uh, another very, very important value is what I call opposition. Um, if you have, uh, for instance, uh, a city and you have a lot of functions, well, first of all, the infrastructure, uh, you have a lot of um, well, lines of how to move, you have a lot of white lines on the street, a skateboarder crosses those lines. Uh, a parkour jumper, as you saw, he has a roof or a little uh, thing that separates two buildings. He jumps over it. Um, and also the functions of the cities. Uh, you have a bench, which is actually thought uh, made to sit on and relax. Uh, a skateboarder uses it for activity. He jumps on it, uses it for play. And, uh, and this way of challenging the existing ways of uh, organizing our, our city and our society is very important. And so, uh, third of all, you have uh, self-organization. What's very, very interesting about the street sport organization is that they actually don't do it within the uh, traditional club life. Uh, so they would, um, they would actually um, go do it themselves, basically. Uh, so you can have one of the one of the organizing talents in a group where you have some people playing basketball and they want to make a tournament somewhere and uh, well one of them is good at writing so he writes uh, to the municipality he gets 10,000 krona and 1,000 uh, dollars he gets a boom blaster and uh, they go and have a little tournament <coughs> And uh, those three uh, values all together, I mean, I mean, you can use them everywhere in society, can't you? Uh, it's, it's core values in an economy, to so have a flexible economy that invents new things, 
that's uh, flexible to new developments in, in the outside and the inside of the economy itself. Uh, uh, it's, it's very important, but it's actually also very, very, very important in a solid democracy, I think. Um, maybe we could uh, describe our, our situation, and I have to say that this is mainly, uh, it's also the rest of the world, but it's mainly, I think, a European issue, this way of understanding politics. Um, but I think that we, at least in Europe these days, are in a trespassing between a very, very big criticism of everyone and all young people being very individual and very selfish, um, to actually starting focusing on a personality instead of the individual. And what's a person? A person, that's someone with, what I said before, that's someone who's got an identity. Uh, that's. Um, that's someone who is, that's someone with a family, that's someone with certain values, that's someone who went to New York, that's someone who never went to New York. Um, and this, as the core sort of principle in a democracy, is very, very important, and I think especially in this stage in Europe. We saw it before in Morton's presentation that, that a democracy, um, well, like we didn't see it in his presentation, but we could derive it from this presentation, that, that what's important in a society is who you are. Okay. So uh, Morton is working with women so that women can be women, so they can be what they are. And whereas you probably 30 or 40 years ago worked a little bit more with redistribution of resources, economic resources in a society, uh, I think now you work a lot more with identities in a society. So a good state can be measured uh, in how you actually uh, are able to see identities and how identities are actually able to unfold. Okay. Uh, and this is where I see street sport as actually not only some, not only a tool to make uh, society develop, but actually an ideal of society. <coughs> so that was the point. A little bit about uh, how we work with this problematic. Uh, as I said, uh, underground, we have about three. We have an umbrella uh, program. We have about three thousand youngsters in our affiliated groups. Those are 10 groups. We have a press count of 26 already. We only started in June this year. Uh, we focus a lot on the principal steps, the first steps of, a, of an organization. So we try to, to help uh, this group of friends that are trying to make the first step to develop and to make a tournament. I think if you uh, divide a grouping in five, uh, where the group one is two, two friends wanting to make a tournament, and group five is a big organization with employees, an office, a total visual identity, etc., we probably use 60 to 70 percent of our work in the first two groups, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay, we do a lot of concrete support, obviously, uh, help to make fundraising, we make telephone calls to the municipalities, uh, we're developing some social sites where they can meet and, uh, and organize their uh, tradition, well, their, their tournaments. Then we're making an education, so we want to educate them in, in being good at organizing. Uh, so that's a small education that where we actually learn them to make the applications to the municipality. Uh, we also make events. We were so lucky to get Pelé uh, to our, one of our tournaments the other, three weeks ago. And uh, here you have him with the kids in the middle. And I can tell you that actually two of the kids knew who he was. <laughs> Thank you very much.